In Paris, France, sometime between 1766 and the early 1800s, a craftsman, a luthier, brought to life a beautiful violin. The violin was loved by all who had the pleasure of making music with her and hearing her play. Somehow she made her way to the United States of America. No one knows when. When she arrived, no doubt her music, her beautiful sound, brought joy to all who heard her. Her travels in America brought her to California. She was getting older, but not growing old. A violin loved and played just keeps getting better and better. Then one day, a kind-hearted doctor and his wife decided that she should be with their daughter, Louise. Louise was ecstatic. She had never seen an instrument that was so beautiful, and they began a lifelong relationship. Louise learned to play the violin as a child, and they even went to college together. Louise became a music major, and her amazing violin taught her to love, to study, to be patient, and together they made beautiful music. Louise married a sailor in 1943. It was wartime. While Louise worked in an aircraft factory, waiting to hear news of her husband, God, her family, and the beautiful violin brought her comfort and hope. The war ended and Louise and her husband had five children. Raising five successful children took time and energy and much sacrifice. Louise and her violin spent time together, but there was always too much to do. Her violin was patient. They occasionally made music together, but not nearly enough. Time marches on. Her violin had many long naps, almost in hibernation, but Louise made certain to keep her precious friend in tip-top shape. Years went by, and cancer claimed the life of Louise, and she willed her precious violin to her five children. They all knew how much her precious, beautiful violin meant to her. All five children knew that the violin could be sold for a substantial amount of money. Louise's children had amazing gifts. They all loved music, but none of them were musically inclined. So her violin was appraised, played a few times by neighbors, but basically put in a closet for 20 years. Louise's son knew that his brothers and sisters would love to hear their mother's violin played again and he tried numerous times to find someone to play her and record the beautiful sound. But time marches on and it didn't happen. Then, a pandemic spread across the world. The world was locked down. Fear spread more than the pandemic. But those who are gifted and who have spent their lives enjoying their instruments kept playing. When it comes to music, the best of the best travel the world to bring joy to kings, queens, rich people, poor people, healthy people, and sick people. Beautiful music cannot and should not be silenced. But there was a pandemic, so the musicians were not allowed to bring their music on tour. What to do? A lot of options, but we need their talent to bring us joy and happiness during difficult times. The son thought, now is the time to bring mom's violin back to life. Time to wake her up for all to enjoy as she had for two and a half centuries. Then he met Johnny and Carly. They knew a guy who played the fiddle, who agreed to play and record some songs on the violin. No pandemic and Doug Moreland would have been in Panama with his family. They came back to Texas and Doug agreed to meet with Johnny and Carly and sound man John Michael in Fredericksburg, Texas. Doug is a fiddle player and a chainsaw artist. The son brought his mom's violin to pass off to Doug in San Antonio. When he arrived, Doug was using his chainsaw to carve up a tree and turn it into a work of art. At first, the violin was perplexed, maybe even frightened that the guy was cutting up a tree with pieces flying all over the place. But she settled down when she remembered that over 200 years ago, an amazing craftsman made her from a maple and a spruce tree. She hoped for the best, settled down. That's what instruments do. They hope that artists will bring out the best in them. Well, Doug tuned her up and they made some great music.
They were the same strings and notes, but it was a different sound than she was used to, but she liked it. The song made her begin to wake up again and feel alive. The vibrations from being played excited her. She had come from Paris, France, made her way to California, and now she was in Texas. She loved the new sound. She hadn't been played this fast for a long time. She was a little concerned and perplexed when everyone but Louisa's son kept calling her a fiddle instead of a violin. It didn't matter. She was making music again. Beautiful music. Doug got her going. Can't stop now. Johnny said, let's do this again. He said he knew a wonderful violin fiddle player named Katie Shore. Because of the pandemic, she was home in Fredericksburg. Maybe she would consent to play. The son and his wife met Katie at Johnny and Carla's studio, and Katie and the violin made some incredibly beautiful music. Katie said she's coming back to life. It was such a joy for the son and his wife to listen to her play, and she sang too, about Sweet Jack. Coincidentally, the son and his wife's youngest grandchild. There was a connection that the son didn't know existed between an accomplished fiddler and this wonderful fiddle. Sweet Jack, nine years, nine lives till they say, where did you go when you went away? That day the world shook a little bit, we're all still recovering from it. Sweet Jack, he said, uphill both ways, to learn the facts and you know one day, that life's what you make of it, uh-huh. The son knew his mom would be delighted. Her violin was making the sounds and the music she loved so much. She was now a fiddle and ecstatic that Katie and her were bringing joy into a world filled with fear. Their music reached the hearts of the son and his wife and everyone who was there. It brought out a joy, peacefulness, and emotions that only music can provide. It was time to go, but the music would be forever ingrained in their hearts. The son would forever be indebted to Katie for her kindness. Katie said that the violin needed a little work. She referred the son to Todd Sloan, a gifted artist in Austin, Texas, who would be able to work on her. The son met Todd at his home, and because of Katie, and also because of Mom's violin, he was treated like family. Todd replaced the strings and bridge, and she was ready for another chance to be played again. Katie's brother, Ross Holmes, also an amazing musician and fiddle player, was also free because of the pandemic kept him from going on tour as well. He was going to be in town to visit his little sister, and he agreed to play Louisa's fiddle. What a delight. It was his son's birthday, and his present from these gifted musicians was to play his mom's fiddle. They also played together with dual fiddles. His mom's fiddle could now really show her sound, her quality, her strength, her tone, her boldness, her age. People get older and many don't want to show their age. In people, age brings experience. And if you're listening to your heart, it also brings wisdom. It's not so bad getting old. Fiddles also improve with age, so if you're two and a half centuries old, you know you can compete with the best fiddles in the world. What a joy for those who listen and for the fiddle when the artist and the fiddle come together to produce sounds with such clarity and boldness 
Heart Peter Pearson Beautiful Tones. Ross and Katie played together, they also sang. Ross said that the fiddle had a tone that would bounce off the back of a concert hall and would stand out in a 70-piece symphony orchestra. There were no doubters about his comments. Ross and Katie played Tennessee Waltz. played box concerto. The violin pierced our hearts with joy. After numerous songs, sadly it was time for those two talented artists to go. Ross put mom's violin back in her new case. So sad for an instant to be stopped playing. But Katie and Ross and the son agreed that it was only fitting for this instrument to be played again and again. It will happen and soon others will have their hearts lifted by the music that only this beautiful fiddle could make.